All right, boys, we are here. We are here. We are good to go. First thing we're going to do, though, is I'm going to watch this video on electric cars. I'm going to eat my subway really loudly to be obnoxious and really annoy you guys. And uh, that's pretty much it. My eye is really red. Oh my gosh, so red. So red. I feel a bit embarrassed. Before I start talking, I'm going to eat this food and we're going to watch a video on electric cars. Every time we do a video on electric cars, the same debate shows up in my comments. Some people argue that electric vehicles are worse for the environment than internal combustion engines. Others say that EVs are not even close to as bad as internal combustion. I, uh, I, I don't know. So. I set out to find out once and for all, are electric vehicles worse for the environment? What I found genuinely surprised me. Hey, big thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this episode of Wheelhouse. Hey, I've got a good head of hair, I think. Losing my I'm head. pretty proud of it. Gonna try to keep it as long as I can. But guess what, I'm young, and sometimes things change. I get worried sometimes about losing my hashtag thick boy locks. Luckily, Keeps is here to help prevent me from losing my curly thick boy locks, okay? You don't even have to go to the doctor anymore. You can just talk to a doctor online, and boom, your hair- Do you know I think it's really strange sometimes how people promoting hair loss products have lots of hair, and people who promote healthy skin already have healthy skin. I like moisturizers and stuff. I always thought it was kind of strange on those beauty adverts for women, how it's promoting some kind of like moisturizer and they've already got like 16 year old skin. <laughs> so it's like, you wouldn't benefit from that product anyway, you know? False advertising. Hair loss medication is delivered right to your door. Look guys, the truth is with hair loss, prevention is key. So it's better to start now with a full head of hair and be sorry about it later. Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and start your treatment today. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash wheelhouse50 or click the link in the description below and receive 50% off your first order. 50. I'm sorry, 50% off. That's amazing. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash wheelhouse50. Support the companies that support Donut and thank you Keeps for supporting this show. In this- I'm really skeptical of like <laughs> hair growth products. I don't know, I just feel like I'm skeptical. I like, they, they can't actually work, can they? Video, we're gonna do our best to compare the environmental impact of electric vehicles versus gas powered ones. And look, I'm gonna try to be as impartial and unbiased as possible because I am a car boy. I love gas cars and I love electric cars and I have no agenda to push. I just wanna know what's true and what's false, okay? This could have easily been an hour long video because honestly, this is a lot more complicated than I initially thought. But I know you're busy and you ain't got time for that. So we're just gonna look at some facts for both types of vehicles and try to draw a conclusion from that. First, let's take a look at some ways electric cars are bad for the environment. And let me tell you, there's a few. One of the biggest arguments against electric vehicles is that battery production for an EV is much more detrimental to the environment than the production of internal combustion vehicles. So, is that true? Uh, Yes, the initial environmental footprint from current electric vehicle production is greater than production of internal combustion engines. The large batteries EVs use are made with lithium, which like any raw material needs to be mined. And the mining process produces lots of greenhouse gases. It's a problem that's only going to grow unless the manufacturing process becomes more efficient. Sales of EVs top- This is a really good question. Why are lithium batteries, sorry, why is lithium good for batteries? That's a really good question. So I'm asking the next question here. Okay, so lithium batteries are the most productive way of getting the most amount of power out of a single battery. Why? Why lithium? Why not sodium? Sodium batteries, huh? I make my own sodium powered battery, huh? And when you're done with it, you crumble it up and you put it on your, uh, you dessert. Dessert? Salt on dessert? What? Oh, man. I really enjoy those nachos. Holy shit. I don't know why I eat the nachos first and then the salad second. Because I think I should eat the good stuff last, right? right. Physics and chemistry, I guess. Yeah, but I want to know the f why the physics and chemistry. So I went with a chicken bacon salad. Oh. Can you see it? Can you see it? Got lots of green.
Oh my god. They put so much honey mustard on it. Holy fuck. Topped 1 million per year for the first time in 2017. Some estimates predict that by the year 2030, there will be more than 125 million EVs on the road, and those vehicles are gonna need batteries. Needless to say, lithium is in high demand, and it all has to come from somewhere. It takes on average about eight to 10 metric tons of CO2 to produce an electric vehicle. That's a lot. Obviously, the bigger the battery, the more CO2 it takes to produce it. Some smaller batteries in economy size EVs may take as few as two metric tons to produce, but larger EVs with long range batteries could be responsible for up to 17 metric tons of CO2 emissions. Good Lord. Conversely, the average production for an internal combustion vehicle produces around seven metric tons of CO2. Why does EV production lead to a bigger environmental footprint? More than half of the world's lithium supply comes from the quote lithium triangle, an area between Chile, Bolivia, and Argentina. In the arid salt plains of the Atacama Desert high up in the Andes Mountains, workers drill through the crust of the salt to get to the mineral rich brine below the surface. This process leaches massive amounts of groundwater from the surrounding area, resulting in a decreased water supply and less accessible water for local agriculture. In a region of Chile called Salar de Atacama, mining companies have used 65% of the region's water. It takes 750 tons of brine to produce just HG's one ton of lithium. Well, but lithium is just one of the components of a battery. It's actually a smaller percentage than you might think too, at around 6%. A growing 6%. concern surrounds the sourcing of another element used in batteries, cobalt. But the issue is more of an ethical dilemma as some cobalt mines use child labor which is reprehensible. And then there's the problem of recycling these things. The process in which lithium ion batteries are recycled is not at the point it needs to be to deal with the growing number of spent batteries from electric vehicles. There are plenty of different challenges associated with recycling these batteries. Relatively inane things like storage becomes a huge issue because of the volatility of elements in a lithium battery. There have already been a number of fires in facilities that process old batteries. Is the number of potentially catastrophic fires and explosions going to go up as more batteries are stockpiled in the future? It all depends on how quickly the industry evolves to deal with these issues. The fact of the matter is modern electric vehicle production is in its relative infancy compared to gas engines. So as time goes on and new processes come into play, the environmental impact will get better, I hope. The same can be said about where electric vehicles get their electricity. Right now, many regions of the US are still getting their power from coal power plants. So the impact of driving a zero emissions car in those regions is more detrimental to the environment than driving an EV in places with clean energy, such as wind, solar, and hydroelectric power plants. But as those types of energy become more common, the efficiency at which an EV operates will only get better. So now that we know the very real problems of electric electric vehicle production, how do they compare to the internal combustion engine? Let's start where we did with electric vehicles, production. Manufacturing the average internal combustion vehicle produces seven metric tons of CO2. This number takes into account everything from the mining ore for steel to the moment the car rolls off the production line. That number is lower than EVs because of the absence <coughs> of lithium ion batteries. It also has to do with how efficient ice manufacturing has become. We're talking about the industry that is responsible for inventing the assembly line. After the car rolls out of the factory, greenhouse emissions from gasoline powered cars average around 5.2 metric tons per year. And that's if the car drives the national average of about 11,800 miles per year. Over the lifespan of a car, it's responsible for 57 metric tons of CO2. That's seven for production and 50 in emissions. Gasoline, like lithium, has to be mined. The average car in the US goes through about 500 gallons of gas per year. And that gas, like the lithium in the batteries, <coughs> has to come from somewhere. Right. There's a lot of steps between the extraction of crude oil to you filling your Actually. car at the gas station and each step has an environmental Actually. impact. Crude oil extraction starts Actually. with drilling into the earth, either on land or on the ocean floor. After the crude oil is mined, it needs to be refined into gasoline and other petroleum products such as jet fuel, 
petroleum jelly, and plastic. This process releases tons of greenhouse gases, including not only CO2, but methane and nitrous oxide as well. Every day around the world, close to 95 million barrels of oil are produced. And every day, oil refinement is responsible for emitting 767 million tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. Sure, the average car is responsible for 5.2 tons of CO2 every year, but oil refineries release a whopping 280 billion metric tons of CO2 in that same time frame. Fucking chargers driving by, dude. All right, let's dial it back and get some more manageable numbers, okay? I'm sorry. We know that over the average lifespan of a car with an internal combustion engine, it will emit roughly 57 metric tons of CO2. Over the same time period, the average EV is responsible for 28 metric tons of emissions, less than half of that of an ICE engine. Despite the fact that electric vehicles make more CO2 during their production, they more than make up for it by not having any emissions during use. Taking into account the emissions produced by electric power plants that electric vehicles source their power from, the national average for an EV is around two metric tons per year. So that means the average EV will become more efficient than a gas-powered car between six months to two years of driving it. In fact, even the least efficient electric vehicle with the dirtiest power source, like a coal power plant, will be better for the environment than the most efficient gas engine after a certain period of time. Electric vehicles in states with access to cleaner electricity like windmills, solar, and hydroelectric power plants are significantly more efficient. Look, I cross-referenced everything in this video and have no agenda to push. I just wanted to put that out there because, you know, it's kind of tiring seeing the same bogus facts being regurgitated in the comments every time we make a oh, video on EVs. Let's take a look at a few more myths. Myth number one, electric vehicle production and charging from coal-powered plants produces more emissions than gas car production and operation. False. If you need a little more convincing, here's an amazing app that can calculate and compare the emissions of any gas car versus any electric car, and in the long run, any EV beats any gas car in efficiency. I'll put the link right here and in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. Oh, I want to check that link out. All right, select brand. Select model. All right, so it shows the full life cycle of a vehicle. So let's go for a, a Nissan Leaf. I don't really know a lot of uh, electric cars. So the blue one is the tank. And compare it to, what, what car should we compare it to? I'm trying to think of something economical, like uh, a VW. What's the really small cars? Smart cars. Because I'm thinking of one that's like super economical. Right, okay. Select the energy mix. Oh, we'll go for the UK. All right, okay. Ah, wow, this is so in-depth. Holy shit. The battery lifetime mileage. This is a lifetime in both vehicles, components, including electric gear. All right, so like for like, if they both done 240,000 miles, right, kilometers. So this is pretty close, isn't it? Because the smart car is just insanely economical because it's a car that has like no weight. What about, like, say, a Ford Focus? Someone suggested in the chat. Ford Focus. Go for a Fiesta, actually. Fiestas are pretty compact, but they're slightly bigger. Let's go for the, like, a 2010 1.4 liter Ford Focus. So that did give a big advantage to the electric because the electric shrunk down. So I suppose the bigger, the more bigger the model you're going for. Mm -hmm. The bigger the model you're going to go for, the more of a benefit you're going to get with the electric car. What about a Tesla? Tesla. I don't know the models. The Roadsters are bad examples. I heard the Model X. Model X performance. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the difference is uh, a lot closer. A little smart cars. Yeah, that's right. Ah, that's really interesting. So you, you can see that the, the electric vehicle initially on production produces way more greenhouse gases, but then over the lifetime of the vehicle, the combustion engine pulls out on front just due to the uh, use of fuel. That's really interesting. Our electric grid can handle the onslaught of EVs. This one is also false. Even if a quarter of the cars on the road were electric tomorrow, the electric grids in the U.S. can handle all of them without a disruption. Myth number three, government subsidies for electric cars are unfair to poor people. They only benefit the rich. Now, this is a pretty prescient insight, okay? It's true that if you buy an electric car, you can get a federal rebate of up to 7500 bucks. That benefits everyone. But if you're rich enough to buy an expensive luxury EV like a Tesla Model X, you'll actually only receive about half of that amount. 
Yeah, kind of surprising, huh? Look, man, I love my gas-powered Mustang. I'm gonna own a gas-powered car for the rest of my life. Nothing matches the sound of a V8 turning gas into noise. I'm gonna get that tattooed on me someday. But I still have to acknowledge the truth. No matter how you spin it, electric vehicles have less of an environmental impact than gas-powered cars. I'm not gonna say you're a bad person if you don't like EVs, because you're not. I just wanna put the, put the facts on the table. If this video helps you learn, I'm very happy for that. And I welcome you aboard. There doesn't need to be any sort of separation. Hey, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button down there. Hit the bell too so you never miss another donut video. We're uploading every day now, which is uh kind of stressful. But we're having fun. Follow me on all social media at Nolan J. Sykes. Follow Donut at Donut Media on all social. Be kind, be kind. See you next time. Alright. Ah, Christ. Still water. Alright, okay, we're done now.